So whenever I wear my hair like this, like literally every time, the soap and clay kidlets start talking about how their friend next door has a pair of elf ears and how they would very much like a pair of elf ears of their own. And I think I just made the connection today that that's the case. And I think it's because I'm definitely sending off some elf vibes whenever I do my hair like this. So that's fun. Uh, we are making nothing elf related and the kiddos are not getting elf ears to my knowledge anytime soon. But you know, it's just, hi, this is my time and this is what's on my brain right now. So now you know, and we are all having fun. I will tell you what we are making and what we are doing and why in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Open Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 276 of 365 days of soap, and today we are making the bath bombs for the rose soaps that we did a couple weeks ago. And these are fun bath bombs because we are going to be including in our awesome bubbly thing recipe bath melts as well. Now bath melts, which you may also know by the name of like bath truffle, it has a lot of uh, butters and oils in it to really provide a nice moisturizing experience within the bath itself without it getting too overly greasy within the tub. So we have done these on the channel before, think it's probably time for a refresh, and now we get to play with new scents and new designs while we talk about how to construct a good bath melt and how much you need to put into each bomb and all of the things, you know, while we make some summer bath bumps. Okay, on to the making of the bath bombs that are going to go with all of these awesome rose blend soaps that we made for the summer line. Now, first and foremost, we are doing a bath melt line for these. And I like to make my bath melts in advance and then put them at the bottom of a you know bath bomb so it shows first so that's kind of fun uh second so you can tell the difference when you're making massive amounts of bath bombs in like one fell swoop if you hide the bath melt in the middle you might forget that there's one in there which means you might forget that that's a different recipe than what you normally use and so i very much like putting my bath melts in the bottom of the mold first and then building the bath bomb around it so again, I know it's there. Now, bath melts, uh, we've done on the channel before in a number of ways. Uh, again, they're sometimes called bath truffles. And uh, really what it is, is it is a combination of some really luxurious oils. I use cocoa, or I'm sorry, butters. I use cocoa butter and shea butter in mine, combined with the things that you already put into bath bombs, i.e. baking soda and citric acid. And the reason why I prefer to you to do bath melts this way, as opposed to just like say putting chunks of shea butter or cocoa butter or mango butter or, you know, butter butters into just a bath bomb is because including that in a nice kind of fluid mixture and then letting it all dry into some small cavity molds. These particular bath melts that you're seeing right here, right now, they are about half an ounce in weight. So 
small molds, uh, things that you would use for like mini ice cubes, those sorts of silicone molds. Anyway, combining those butters with your baking soda and citric acid, again, something that you would already use for a bath bomb, actually helps disperse that oil better and ensures that, well, the butter, and ensures that those butters melt in the tub and you don't have just these like floaty globby bits of like shea butter or cocoa butter just hanging out in the tub because they didn't quite melt. It's better for the end product, I guess, for, for the usability. And of course, when we're making things for other humans, we want to make sure that it's easy to use and things don't go awry. So that is why I choose to do it this way with a bath melt, a solid bath melt inside as opposed to just putting in just a chunk of butter. That said, there are a lot of people that just put chunks of butter into their bath bombs and have a moisturizing bomb. I um, have not had enough consistent success with the actual fizzing out and the tests that I have done to make that make sense for me. But if it's made sense for you, then that's awesome. For sure, this particular bath bomb here, the gray, is coming from activated charcoal. Everything else, I am using micas that have been cut with cornstarch. So for the people who have like to tell me in my bath bomb videos that I'm using way too much mica, I'm going to remind you all again that I cut my micas with cornstarch to ensure that it's easier to actually mix the color throughout the entirety of the bath bomb powder. So I've done the first two and uh, these last two, the rose bouquet, remember that was the scent that was very, very dark in color, super wild. Didn't do anything weird with the actual soap. Look, there's the soap. I mean, it got a little bit spicy in the pour and there was some interesting thickening, but it all worked out. It Beautiful soap and there's no reason that that would do anything, you know, remotely like that in bath bombs. And so, yeah, these are the, the last two in the line because again, we made four rose soaps, so four bath bombs. Now, the right ratio, hang on, I'm gonna give you a very big recipe for bath melts. It's a very big recipe. It makes a, in that it makes a ton of bath melts. So 10 ounces of baking soda, five ounces of citric acid, three ounces of cocoa butter, one, ounces, one ounce of shea, 0.25 ounces of poly, which is going to be very important if you're putting scent in, but even if you're not, oh, I've popped a glove, time to, time to fix that. But even if you're not, it actually does help everything disperse really nicely within the tub, so you're not left with weird oil pockets. And then, you know, 0.25 ounces of your scent in all of that. And that's a very standard, very easy to work with uh, bath melt recipe. So effectively what you do is you melt down your butters and then you add your poly and your scent to that liquid version. And then you add that liquid version to your pre-measured out, you know, solids with your baking soda and your citric acid. You can also add kaolin clay. You could add other clays to make it smoother and you know more fun, but very easy stock standard recipe for a bath melt. And as I said, um, for each bath bomb, I think no more than half an ounce in weight of a bath melt for these kind of standard size, you know, bath bombs uh, is, is great. Anything over half an ounce, I think you're going to run the risk of those bath melts actually making the tub too slick. And so let's say you take a bath and you drain your tub and you don't have an opportunity between the time that you're draining the tub and when somebody needs to actually use the, the tub for shower purposes, like if it's a combo situation, like so many people have in their house, it won't leave a slick surface that somebody's going to slip and fall on. Anything over half an ounce, I have noticed, has the potential to do that, especially if you're dealing with those smooth, you know, like cast iron tubs that don't have any grippies on the bottom anyway, which are all of my tubs. They are all very, very smooth surfaced. We do not have a single one with grippy 
properties. So keep that in mind. That And also, if you're going to be using just straight shea butter or cocoa butter into a moisturizing bath bomb, like chunked out, or even melted down into the bath bomb recipe itself, no more than half an ounce per bomb. Otherwise, again, it, it's too greasy, it's too oily, your body is going to feel a little bit sticky when you leave, and we obviously don't want that. We want it to be hydrated and moisturized and feeling awesome, but we don't want it sticky. We don't want anybody to slip and slide afterwards. I mean, none of these things would be good. You get it. So yeah, that's that. And for this particular recipe, I didn't put anything else extra fancy into this bath bomb recipe, so it's still my stock standard. Two cups baking soda, one cup citric acid, half a cup cornstarch, just very, very stock standard. But you could, to that, add half a cup of Epsom salts or remove the uh, cornstarch entirely and just put one full cup of Epsom salts or, you know, those sorts of things as well. But nothing super fancy about the actual bath bomb recipe. You're really going to get the fancy coming from the recipe for the bath melts. And that's what makes this one special. And all of these have set up overnight, and now it's time for the reveal. Uh, no problems with cracking or separating or any sort of warty wart issues with all of these. They are very firm. They are very, like, you can drop them on the ground, and they do not break or crumble or, you know, whatever. Bath bombs are always tricky business, but as you can see, even with the weird humidity issues that I'm dealing with in my shop... None problems whatsoever. And that is to say there are none problems incorporating the uh, the bath melts into them. And they are a very special, awesome little, little bonus to a bath bomb. It's kind of bath bombs to the awesome degree. And I love them. I love everything about bath melts. And when you get to include them in a bath bomb, it's all the better. And that is day 276. And there they are, the uh, summer bath bombs in all of the rose blends that we used for the rose soaps that we did recently with some nice, cool, moisturizing, skin-loving awesomeness to really up the bath game. And they're beautiful. Of course, they're beautiful. All bath bombs are beautiful. The blooms on these have been pretty fantastic. I've been really enjoying using these just because of the color and the scent, obviously, but the extra moisture that you're getting from the shea and the cocoa butter, it's just delightful and really does help out with skin during this time of the year when you go from one day that's absolutely gorgeous and the sun is shining to back to dreary, rainy, cold, humidity, all, all the things. So I'm loving that for sure. And if you guys are you know, interested in making those bath bombs with the bath melts, you should do it. That'd be fun. Let me know how they go. If you have any questions, of course, always drop them in the comments and I or a mod or a sudzer or somebody will definitely help you out with, you know, whatever questions you might have, for sure. If you are interested in becoming a Sudzer that gets to give cool information to other, you know, Sudzers, you know, subscribe. That would be excellent. For those of you who have subscribed, hey, Sudzer, thanks for helping me answer and troubleshoot questions in the comments because I don't always get to all of them. There are a lot at this point, over 600 videos on the web, on the actual, you know, channel and lots of comments every day across all of those videos. So I appreciate it when my Sudzers do step forward and help with answering some of those questions. Thank you. And thank you all for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I'm out of here for today, but I will see you all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.